Hey guys, nothingwire.com and we have the new HTC One E8 with us and like all HTC devices we get this very very sad demo packing here so it does not have all the uh, accessories out here but still we're gonna show you what with us anyway so that's the box nothing much to show they will straight away go open the box and that's the one e8 will come back to the later you also uh, would get the earphones but not have the earphones with us they weren't provided with the review unit but you have this USB data cable the USB 2.0 data cable and you have it's pretty much I guess a 0.5 ampere uh, USB wall adapter round two pin ones <laughs> we got the extra earbuds by the way two pairs but we did not get um, the earphones so once we go past the rather sad introduction of the review we go to the one e8 and uh, the first thing you notice that it's strangely similar to the one m8 or even the one now uh, there are two main differences with the one m8 which is kind of um, you know priced much more than this one uh, on the exterior side at least it is that the back flap or the back of the one e8 is made of plastic and it has that rubbery finish on the back unlike the metal finish on the m8 plus the e8 does not contain the depth sensor so you see there is only the camera and the led flash the one m8 has a secondary sensor here which they call um, a dual camera arrangement but that actually a depth sensor now what it does to the e8 is that it actually makes the autofocus much slower than the one on the m8 mainly because uh, without the assist of the depth sensor but we'll come back to that later we'll check out the other part of the whole phone now the whole e8 actually look other than those build qualities much like the one m8 and the one it carries that same design philosophy which is a good thing apart from the power button here now again we've always wish uh, HTC has put the power button here because this is a big device it's a 5 inch screen so having the power button here is that much more easier because from here when you're uh, you know doing something here uh, if you have to press the power button you have to go here but luckily you can just wake up the device just by double tapping it so that's one of the um, workarounds but still I always would have liked it here and most of the manufacturers of 5 or over 5 inch devices actually started putting the power button here so I don't um, know why HTC could not do that. So you have the 5 inch screen full HD so inside the specs are almost identical to the one M8 you have the stereo boom speaker there amazing feature the front camera notification LED lights and sensors on this side you have the dual sim card tray now I'm gonna open them to show you they both take nano sims and my trusty safety pin so there you see it takes both nano sims and go below you will have the micro USB 2.0 port 3.5 mm jack volume rocker and your micro SD card slot that supports up to 128 GB of external storage and then your power button out there behind that 13 ampere focus camera secondary noise cancelling mic and then your LED flash and what we like here is that golden touch around the buttons that golden touch um, you know on that slightly grayish background looks very very premium it looks absolutely beautiful to me as HTC branding up but um, I'll tell you something personal that the HTC E8 or HTC One E8 while holding and even while looking at it considering the price actually looks and feels better than the One M8 of course I know the One M8 has much upgraded material has metal so it's much more durable but this guy is much easier to hold and One M8 and even the HTC One actually tends to fall or slip from my hands sometimes let's say um, you know when I'm trying to do something very fast and I'm on a metro on a bus where it jerks often so at times if I'm doing something I'm not holding it properly it jerks it just you know jerks or bumps somewhere that that kind of um, tend to slip away but this guy never mainly because of this amazing um, a rubber finish plastic on the back it gives a great amazing hold but you would see that uh, the glossy screen on the front as well as the back here is prone to getting scratches now we've been stress testing this device so obviously yours would not uh, probably attract so many scratches but still you can see if you look closely it 
has got lots of small scratches so we recommend having um, what you call a screen guard on and even on the back uh, you would see those scratches and everything now this guy does not attract fingerprints per se but if you have oily hands and other things then it's gonna stick here and that's gonna look very very ugly um, the bad thing about this is that um, once it attracts or once it gets those oil and fingerprints hard to remove them because it's rubber you know so even if you like oh when if you uh, wipe it very gently or very nicely some of that remains so you have to be really really careful about that uh, however the natural tendency of this rubbery bag is to attract lot of lot less fingerprint on a normal case uh, as compared to the glossy front yeah so it cannot open this back flap anyway so overall uh, nothing much to talk about the E8 which is uh, different from the M8 but then we definitely like the back flap and the whole of the device overall better than the one M8 plus although we do not have the depth sensor here but and this is pretty doable because it costs much much less than the M8 the display on the E8 is exquisite and very lovable now full HD uh, resolution on a 5 inch screen is that particular sweet spot that we absolutely love and every flagship is actually trying to make um, you know that kind of a combination at least that uh, PPI of color density of combination but after all 5 inch and a full HD is the perfect combination of a resolution on a screen so um, everything comes out the colors pop out everything is very crisp and bright as well even if you look at these icons very very close like you uh, touch your eyelashes on the screen and look at them you won't file the um, icons pixelated I'm gonna show you some pictures and all and then you would see uh, that the details are there it's, this screen has amazing details so even if I like zoom in to the maximum you won't see them pixelated mainly because of those extra amounts of you know pixels crammed into the um, uh, display and also the viewing angles are superb now note that I have the brightness level one of the least I mean I have marked it one of the least just to be able to film this so that the uh, surrounding does not get too dim but even then you see it's so amazing now if I increase the brightness for example you would see that things get even better I go here to see I have the brightness level here now I can have it in auto I can also increase it to the max that's gonna dim my surrounding but that's okay but you can see it's amazing color details here everything kind of pops out every one of the threads you can see it's a mind-blowing display we've already always loved this kind of a display but we generally would not keep it um, in maximum we would keep it in auto we would let it um, decide the brightness according to the surrounding according to the ambience light really but you see awesome I, mean, I can just stop talking about this display it's so amazing yeah. and the same thing goes for video viewing as well even uh, when you're looking at it uh, looking at a night screen uh, I mean a night scene for example where um, it should be reflecting a lot but mainly because it's a very high quality IPS screen you do not see that much of a reflection you can still see the scene up to some level however not as much as an AMOLED screen AMOLED screen is like the standard of how black how deep the blacks are but even then this screen is also way way better than some of the other screens uh, we've seen in the previous generation now uh, just let us check out the color thing now when I see the colors we see that the display actually oversaturates the uh, red and the pink side of it um, we're gonna uh, show it to you when we show uh, when we talk about the camera and how the pictures come out and all even there you would see that it actually oversaturated the red and the pink um, part very slightly not much not annoyingly but it softens the picture uh, you do not see much detail whenever there are uh, pinks and red but other colors blue and green amazing green I mean um, we love the green that it brings out in its photo that that camera it almost feels like a Fuji you know Fuji film green amazing greens so that's about the display a top-notch display from HTC 
So then we have uh, Sans 6.0 on top of Android KitKat 4.4.2 and you have a very familiar unlock screen Google now notification bar and you can unlock from here and you blink fade on the left side now on sense 6.0 you can remove the blink fade, uh, blink fade and then your home screen also you can long press here I can add all these things you can also do this and you can add more home pages you can add widgets and all and there you can see once you go to edit you can actually remove that you can set that at, as your home or you can remove blink fade and you can also add up some preloaded um, content out there or you can also search for keyword and have that particular uh, shown as your feed so the notification bar you can do it with all of those from there quick function toggle bar you can also edit it you can sort them yeah. and then your app doc is customizable you can drag anyone on top of another to create a folder and then long press on this will take you to google now your recent app menu you can simply tap that to go to that particular menu also you can drag it up to release or kill them basically you can also press this to kill all of this at once long press on the back button does nothing and then you have your main app drawer now ACC's app drawer scrolls vertically you can have the grid size in 3x4 or 4x5 I like it at uh, 4x5 because it shows me more apps per page and then you can also sort it according to this now uh, you have the typical um, google app like for example those gmails and chromes and other stuff you also have HTC's in-house apps like um, you know music and those things some of the other tools productivity tools like your um, internet and this and scribble and all and then also some of the those are some of the other tools there flashlight and voice recorder HTC backup is a good option that can back your data up your whole phone settings and data up to Google Drive and um, Dropbox for example oh and by the way you get 50 GB of Google Drive free with this one for two years and uh, you have kid mode HTC guide and other things you also have some third-party apps like Twitter or WeChat yeah? also there's a HTC dot view for your dot view cover you can change the settings here let's quickly go ahead and check out uh, some of the uh, settings we'll start with the gallery so we love the amazing HTC gallery specifically this timeline you see uh, in each album you see that short 30 second uh, in a video that kind of tells you a whole story you can go ahead you can use that video you can also publish this video once you go here you can see this this guy is gonna play yeah you can use this video as well so it's it's amazing when you're supposed uh, you know coming from a trip and you have um, that many pictures an album so this guy this short clip actually tells a summary of this trip it also uses um, you know auto uses the background music and you can customize the back, uh, background music as well also gives it retro feeling and all those um, kind of animations and stuff you see you kind of makes it retro and everything just like a mo um, movie you can go to any of these pictures and you can edit the picture from your yeah. A lot of editing and filters and other stuff. You can also share multiple pictures. You cannot uh, edit multiple pictures. By the way, it's very very small. You can see another thing you've uh, we've seen on the M8 also. It's um, here on E8 also. Is that uh, different tools have different uh, color themes? Like for example, this is uh, orange theme gallery. And then let's say if you go to calendar, you'd see it's a blue theme. If you go to mail, uh, okay, calendar and mail, they're probably uh, a blue theme. And if you go, to, let's say somewhere else, if you go, let's say music, you see it's kind of an orange theme. So um, that kind of personalizes, kind of give each of these tool a different a personality, which really, really like. You also have uh, Zoe beta, so Zoe is kind of um, you know, sharing your videos and all those stuff. Just like um, Instagram, it has its own community, not as big as instagram though and then we come to uh, the amazing back camera 13 mp back camera it, it focuses pretty fast and we absolutely love the shutter sound it's very subtle that's how it's very subtle sweet sound yeah 
and it's glass so it's finding it hard to focus but otherwise it's almost zero lag I'll keep on clicking I see you can choose the best photo you can delete others and all those stuff and then your um, what is this flash setting and then some of the other uh, main settings we'll come back to the settings first those are the modes so you have your camera mode and then you have the video mode it again starts pretty fast you can also click stills while recording a video and then you have Zoe camera selfie dual capture and panorama 360 degree now uh, that's the main setting the shooting uh, settings really so you have auto and you have ISO auto those all those you can change and your exposure compensation scale and white balance and some of the other main settings like the system settings really now uh, you can click it in auto but I have fun while clicking in it says M it's not exactly manual meaning it does not have the aperture control because obviously this guy does not have uh, um, I mean uh, a shutter uh, per se but you can change uh, pretty much everything possible so you can change the WB you can change the exposure compensation scale your ISO even the shutter speed and then you can also have auto like uh, in a focus auto for example from macro till landscape mode and we clicked one photo at uh, I see a shutter speed 1 by 8000 uh, and it freeze the action freeze the very very fast moving action so on uh, the photo and video quality are tremendously good for the price point now it acts like a flagship it has uh, HTC MH camera uh, sense the uh, depth sensor so it cannot autofocus as much also it cannot uh, give you that sense of depth um, that the HTC M8 gives you but apart from that it has got great detail under enough light but uh, it does soften the images and videos after all and it does not shoot at raw no phone right now shoots at raw so you cannot edit them much you can of course uh, sharpen them the metering is very good the exposure control is amazing so the moment you touch somewhere it's gonna expose um, you know it's gonna set the exposure onto that point it's very very fast and accurate and um, as I told you that it kind of soften the images and it's visible mainly in the pink and the red um, area so in the red um, in the same video or photo if you look at uh, some like something like green and a blue then you would able, you'd be able to see the details fairly well but if you see a pink it kind of just oversaturates and hides the detail on the low light uh, after about uh, I don't know ISO 800 or so the um, noise just starts to creep in under ISO 800 uh, well it's not exactly printable but you can uh, very well upload it on the uh, on the web to Facebook or Twitter we'll try to check out the music performance and well, let's see how it goes There is just one thing to say about this dual boom speakers, it's wow. And uh, although the speaker output is not like blasting, it does not go all guns blazing, you probably won't be able to uh, enjoy the music much if you're in a crowded place or if you're traveling let's say in the bus or in the metro. But the bass output and the treble is amazing and uh, 
and I mean you know if you're not in too crowded place the speakers perform just loud enough but it kind of it's good thing that it's checking the loudness just to give you that proper bass and treble uh, when you listen to it with the supplied earphones it's amazing and it's very very good you can also set um, you know how the sound sounds like you know, the equalizer and all but we just like the sound output just like that even the movie viewing experience is amazing you see the sound output is so good yeah it's brilliant every bit of sound is audible and it kind of creates that environment see it kind of creates that uh, surround sound effect you can see the boom boom you can see uh, you can hear uh, the sound even the mid tones see even the low tones you will feel here it's very very good very immersive experience i would say yeah very good Houston and the blind to confirm mission specialist Dr. Stone and mission commander Matthew Kowalski are the sole survivors of the SDS 157 I apologize for not complying I should have stopped working as soon as he instructed me brilliant we just can't stop talking about the speaker output here and uh, as we've been um, you know telling about this um, the, since the HTC one they've got the best speaker output the best arrangement of speakers in the industry and that's true even now no other phone flagship or not can give out this quality of speaker output as far as music and voice is concerned apart from that you have the dialer there very big dialer the call quality is excellent of course but then uh, for a you know this kind of a phone you would expect the call quality and reception to be ex uh, excellent some places like the second level basement or inside the elevator when it's moving too fast your call eventually gets disconnected but even there it tries to keep it um, to a good level and we could talk just about a bit but then eventually it uh, gave away then you have your uh, keyboard and all and this part is slightly becomes cool and the phone is amazingly smooth all it's got all our uh, cutting edge technology kind of processor and ram and everything so no problem there whatsoever even if you stuff uh, all the home pages with uh, widgets you won't feel any lag at all and surprisingly uh, even when we multitask a lot even then we did not feel any lag and I'll tell you um, again another personal thing um, the smoothness is actually much better than the one on the Samsung Galaxy devices I don't know this could be the reason uh, this could be mainly the difference between the TouchWiz and Sans the TouchWiz is just too heavy even Sans used to be very heavy uh, till let's say about Sans 4 or 4.5 but after that they really really toned down the Sans experience and now it's so smooth the TouchWiz UI actually gets laggy at time and specifically when you're using your uh, phone fast you're coming out of a heavy demanding application like a game or let's say office or something straight to the home page or you have lots of app open on the background it lags but not here the sans 6 is one of the best skins on top of any uh, stock android that we've seen it's definitely better than touchwiz is definitely better than lg's uh, skin not not so much better as it's um, as um, than touchwiz but still it's slightly better and it's also better than the sony skin so probably even sense 6.0 is our favorite skin on top of um, stock android so would you buy the htc1 e8 um, but before that let's talk about some of the good and some of the bad things about this phone the good things that it has inside it has got all the power and specification of the flagship htc1 uh, m8 they only are uh, took out some of the feature which some people might not even notice or might not even need or use like for example that depth sensor here yeah. okay there was an added feature an extra feature on the one m8 but if you're um, deducting you know more than 10,000 rupees then i'm happy to have that omitted uh, you also 
do not have a metallic body here but as i told you before that i personally like this body better mainly you know uh, uh, not because of the ruggedness or the durability obviously the m8 uh, metallic body will have more of it but the whole and the overall experience of this is very very good and this is this does not slip away from my um, hands that metallic body on the m8 and even on the original htc1 would best speaker output in the industry uh, very good detail on the image and a video front and um, you know even uh, music output via the earphones are good gameplay experience is damn good the uh, with the benchmark also both gameplay and benchmark we've prepared a separate video so you can uh, watch over there and, and even on the benchmark it scored um, you know one of the top slightly uh, behind um, the one m8 and the s5 and in some cases even uh, behind the um, HTC one but that's okay now um, its biggest competitor would mainly be three uh, not biggest um, competitors would be uh, three uh, the s5 whose price actually came down to about 37k or something and then you have uh, the xperia z1 mini and then the nexus 5 you can safely take the nexus 5 out because that does not even come close to this competition um between z1 and s5 i would consider galaxy s5 as the bigger um, competition to this and uh, if you have 35k um, I would suggest actually the Galaxy S5 is a better buy because that actually is a flagship so it has got those extra features that come with only the flagship and the price has reduced to 35. The E8 was launched at about 35 so it has um, almost all the uh, features of the flagship 1M8 but not exactly all of those. It has omitted the um, sensor here and the body build quality everything. 1M8 was the original competitor of the S5. So the S5 is the flagship so I would still prefer the S5 but this guy is not much less than the S5. If you like this video please hit the like button ask anything related to this device and we'll try to answer them all and please subscribe to our channel for more such awesome content in future thank you